trying to get your attention now. Loud crickets. And what a pain. It's not going to do it for us. They're pleasant and all, but while we think things are fine because we hear the crickets, it's not. Until people start understanding that, really, I mean, more than just saying, well, we got problems, and understand there's a whole lot more than the surface of all this, I don't know. I don't know how this all plays out, even though it, people in the history have told us all about what has to happen. And I think they came to a time, particularly for the United States of America, and said, we're going to play all these presumptions against everyone and see if they catch on. This is BTWRLM334. Someone else has been listening behind the woodshed, I guess. All speech is vain and empty unless it can be accompanied by action. All speech is vain and, and empty unless it can be accompanied by action. Some old dude named Demosthenes. I guess we got Demosthenes. I guess I mispronounced it the dude last week. There's old knowledge that we tend to forget and we tend to give lib service to, I think. And I, Looking through my experience and my studies, it's brought me back to start finding these guys that said you have to take action against the wrongs you see. You have to take actions against the things that you want to see right. You have to impose yourself, if you will, on this, this construction because when you don't, there's those that are going to impose what they want and likely don't care about you. For all the brotherly love statements, and you understand Philadelphia with that cracked bell, use the very same, I think, psyop, if you will, like there's any of that really. And you look around the world and you wonder how, why brotherly love is not pervasive. It's likely because all the good people are just holding back thinking that if they don't impose themselves, that imposing themselves is a problem and it's a crime, when it was only where you impose yourself to stop those that are harming you is what, what we're looking at. And that threat was always going to be on us. And it was focused in on this thing in the construction of the United States of America. If you start to understand really more what I've been saying about not just knowing that the, they're getting us with the words or the words of the traps, or but you start understanding what is actually being said by that communication, then you will start to see what I've been saying, and then it starts to speak to you a whole lot different than what we might be coming up with on our own. Because, again, we're, we're prejudiced by our own ignorance, uh, even though it might be as well learned as it might be. As we went through last week a bit, we can come up with the right decision, you can come up with the right views that certain things that need to be studied, certain things need to be understood, but then, then we we don't fully apply them, or we don't take the proper steps, or we don't take the continuous steps to keep it perfected or understood correctly or understand that maybe we don't have it all and we still need to go further. And that's part of what I, my message here behind Woodshed is to y'all. It, it, you may, it, again, it's perpetual, this thing. And it was set up against us. If, if the way I see it now, it was set up against us. And it's only set up that way because we failed to stand up to our responsibility that we were told up front. And with the, the guidance of the United States of America was the republic, if we could keep it, told to us by another bar member of the day. The ends of court, this esquire, the title, a feudal title holder. And so I don't get lost. I just recognize all that was going on. I don't get lost in it. I just ex look at what the condition was, and I start to distill all that down into what I know today. That, again, it gets, brings me here each week for all these, de a decade now. I, ho I don't think there's been something, anything inconsistent in what I've said, said in, in many different ways using a any manner of things we see in the, in the new, new, you call it the news, I, I realize it's now noticed to us. Good, bad, or indifferent, it's out there. Whether or not it actually has a, a purpose it, it is up for us to discern. And, then he, and now the, the worst of it all comes out to f tell us uh, that it's all pretty much set up. You really have to pick and choose wisely what, what you're after. And if you're on the, just the consumption end, again, just the acquiring of information, not even knowledge, just information, 
Because if a lot of what you're finding out's not not true, then it's not even knowledge what you're finding. You're just it's just a receptacle of information. It has no real purpose, and it, and you'll find that out quickly when you believe into the false stuff and you start acting on the false. You'll be treated. You'll be te- taught real quickly. Someone will bring you behind the woodshed almost immediately. And so, I'm trying to get us to go the other way, where we have a principle in us, maybe even if we haven't been told so well, that we learn those principles and we hold them dear right now while we attempt to throw off that which occupies us in so many different ways. Now, for some of you, here's a little thing came through. For some of you that do a case law, and I can't say that I don't read case law, but and you've heard me read it behind the woodshed here to explain things. However, you hear through me a difference in how Maybe an expansion on actually what's uh, being told to us in these things. But uh, there's now a Harvard is going to uh, let you all see some of this stuff. And I found very interesting part of the story of what, what they're promoting. But anyway, for those of you that read case law, and I have, and I do, but I don't necessarily cite to too much of it. I, I'm realizing now that uh, that may have been a problem. Uh, well, not a, it may have been. It is a problem because each one of these cases is an opinion based on the facts presented right, wrong, or indifferent, in the law or not, or as a set-up case in order to make a pre- precedent against, typically against the people. And so the whole thing takes on a whole other, this whole stuff takes on a whole new, different tone to me. And now I use, I uh, told you, you use, the, these are the occupiers. The Bar Association is an occupier. And if you have any other thoughts about that, you need to look real, a little look closer. Not just because you hate lawyers, or not because most all lawyers are no good. It, it's, there's a dynamic that's set up that's caused them to be an foreign occupier that's taken down your whole way of life, actually. So here, but here we go. We can go and delve into the case law. Tons and tons, I guess, is being put on since uh, 1658. Harvard gives free online access to 40 million pages of U.S. case law. Explore 6.5 million cases dating back to 1658. The very first thing that they show you here is that and it's a very interesting thing you can do. You can do word searches and phrase, uh, phrase search all, searches through this, which is really, really good. You can find out the uh, occurrence and instances of certain types of things and focus in on cases that spoke about certain subject matters. I found interesting the very first thing they point out here that someone studied that they wanted you to see was that someone wanted to know about all the witchcraft in law that was ever stated in these cases. And to me, I looked at that, that's another promotion. Of everything they could have chosen to put up there, they want you to know that someone's looking for all the instances of witchcraft in case law. And so this is another underlying uh, conditional mind conditioning thing. But any rate, here there's a access to a bunch of cases. I won't go into it more. I have not yet gone there to go look. Uh, I use case law a little different, and you've heard me explain how I use case law. And so I would only really use it to find uh, whether or not, if a case is exactly what yours is, which I've never found really one that way, then you can probably use it. But what you're looking for is whether the how the occupier treats this stuff and realizing that that's not said either. It's all opinion and based on how they want to twist and turn the future as you move along. Now, I've tried to show you as we read through this how to read for that and to that's why I keep telling you speak through the way they're going to interpret it, but find the path of the the narrow path of the of the real law. As you, I've pointed out here in a few cases here just this year. Uh, the precedent changes, uh, that a long-standing precedent changes. As I was telling you, that precedent was no good. They now change it today. And so you have to be able to know your rights and the way they're speaking to be able to speak through the color that they throw in to in reinterpret, not declare the law, but interpret the law, which is completely violative as well. Then again, uh, simply understand the distinction when uh, Congress disposed a land and evidence through patent that has the signature of a president, that's a domestic treaty, no court can determine that. No court has jurisdiction over that paper and what it says and what it means. And yet you hear people going down in flames on property taxes all the time. You hear people going down in flames on, the, on code enforcement. And yet there's no judiciary that lawfully can interpret, reinterpret that. And so we've the loss gives us an example of how how far away from keeping that so-called republic, that system that was to honor property in us, different than anywhere, any other time in history that I can find, to the exclusion of the so-called sovereign. And it has the obligation to protect. I've never seen this happen in all history. 
that we're so far from that in the very clear, bright lines that you have to read, you have to understand you're not in a place they've been telling us and it was set up that way. And yet, there's ways to look at this and we get right back to that real quickly. Like I tell you, if you find that statute that says the patents, the judicial, uh, the, the, the branch of judi the judicial branch, however corrupt, has no jurisdiction, that's, boy, that's a big deal. That means that can, no one can decide against it. Now, they do become the proof of the color that they're bringing to commit the felony and then treason because it's a, a treaty, it's a domestic treaty, that patent is a domestic treaty. And they go against the laws of the United States, that's treason. That's, that's not my definition. I don't use my definition. I use the system itself's definition. And so you have all these things you can bring more than opinion to all this. So here's some case law. Uh, I thought it was pretty fine. I always find it funny that all this stuff is hidden. You know, only the so-called uh, the privileged people, you know, the, the, the snowflakes don't cry about this privilege, but they'll cry about the impossible privilege. I mean, the, the privilege of, of choice. I mean, that's just don't choose it. But uh, no, this is a, a privilege now given to Harvard, which is where all these people, a lot of these people come out of to run your life and they have access to this cloistered information and now turning it out. But I've explained to you that possibly we're getting to the point if there's no property, there's no proof due process. If there's no due process, then you're just dealing in equities always, which we heard happen in like 1938. And to remind you here, if you don't understand how extensive this becomes, so you think a patent, you don't, may not understand what a land patent is, all that other stuff. You don't even know that, you, that they're, they exist on all disposed lands you find everywhere in the United States of America. Miners have as patent rights. They're secured as patent, which means the government can't come against our self-initiated entries. And, and that would also include, um, in a different way of saying it, people who enter in for agricultural purposes or ranchers. And yet you see how the, the producer is being destroyed in this country anymore. And we talked all about all these little tidbits are dropping all over the place to tell you that your, your whole society is being undermined in the most foundational ways. And I hear crickets to all of it. So, uh, so I should get a, in the blogcaster a link to all this. Again, the content links uh, are more uh, to see than what I talk about. I was take, telling someone last night uh, on the Twitter in response uh, about that. We go to the content links. I only say parts of this. In other words, I just read the titles of the hit, of the notices to us that's out there, whether we have them to use as tools or just notice to us to respond or prepare ourselves. This today is going to have a little bit of preparation. Uh, what What is out there that we're having to contend with anymore? And how might you m set your mind up in order to deal with it? And it's not about confrontation more than understanding maybe you can avoid it and how to avoid certain things. But when it comes, when the, the color, uh, when the authorita comes in and it shows a badge or costume, what you you got to switch gears, become that investigative reporter. Don't get yourself in more trouble, but make the record without condemning yourself as the first Fifth Amendment allows you if you were just to remain silent. And I saw, we'll talk about that if I get there. Again, so much to talk about here. I can just look at my tabs and say, I'm not going to get to all this but uh, already. But uh, anyway, it's here to talk about, here to expose you to. Uh, it's here what I, uh, and I sp speak to this only because I've seen people in the past do it incorrectly, and that's defined as someone getting pretty beat down uh, and didn't seem to have a remedy around it. When I look around and see that there's a better way to go, and a lot of this is uh, believing who you're t saying is an authority, and they bring the wrong they bring the wrong, the wrong. They make it an argument, and they bring the wrong argument to the wrong forum. This happens to the miners all the time. For as much as I'll be vilified about this position, and that's exactly what happens, and it's predictable. This whole stuff has been predictable. So, uh, anyway, I got lots of thoughts going through my mind on what I want to say here. But okay, let me move on here. Uh, remember, we talked last week about the United States Army doing its test in. North Carolina story comes right back. They know, they know this is the, the natives getting restless over this. And I don't think they're getting restless enough. And I don't mean going to, I don't mean going to uh, physical. I mean, making a bigger noise than being crickets. U S army tries to calm residents ab about upcoming wave of military drills in North Carolina. And uh, so this is a, this is a big deal in my mind. And they're uh, encroaching upon uh, the, the, Inside, they're coming inside to train. They're supposed to have areas outside that they don't, that they're broken away so they don't have to do this. They're not supposed to incite the, the, the people to concern. And that tells you that they are, and they got to come and calm everybody. That's the harm. And I don't see anybody talking about that harm. It happens immediate, folks. You don't have to argue whether or not the harm. As soon as you become alarmed as a populace, that's the harm. They breached their fiduciary duty to keep the peace. And I'm not talking 
fired up like some so-called snowflake over what you feel. I mean, there's a certain thing, a certain objective basis that you could, black and white, I tell you, to go to to show that this is not supposed to be happening. And in a way, there's really no, there's no authority for any authority within these jur- these local counties and stuff to give over to cause alarm in the people. But we don't have the, we're even, we're desensitized to even that level of awareness and re- being active against that encroachment. But here it is, right? A week later after I told you, uh, the student, uh, the um, students, yeah, the residents, though, calm residents. You see how that works and plays into the title. Uh, that's not as well. That may not be uh, correct either. But this is who they're dealing with. The army's dealing with in residents, and and they're dealing with them through, again, all of the civil war that's not over, and all the things we've seen. We've seen in the you're an enemy combatant, and they're coming in. Remember the mega cities that we talked about. All this stuff comes to play. Uh, but right, not even a week later after I told you there's an alarm here. There is. I don't even know about the people. I was asking. Is there many in, uh, if there's many militias that are active back there? Maybe this is sending a message as well. And so here we have. I mean, there's a there should be an alarm, but it should be actually active, and it should be working in, in to quell the insurrection by the army within that state. The military is not supposed to be uh, dealing uh, inside the state under any pretense. And the war of terror, which you need to say is not war on terror, the war of terror is implemented through this action. And so as long as we stay crickets on this, it, it's going to continue and it's going to get worse. And they're testing out the people and they desensitize the people. It's been all these tests are not new. They're going on and on. The fact that they came out last week to say a whole state's going to be involved. They now come back. Oh, not the whole state. See, they know. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what to try and uh, try to calm the public. Well, the alarm has already been started. That's over. And now it's time to shut it all down. And I don't hear, I don't hear the proper response for that. And, uh, and there is a proper response. It's not not everyone gunning up and everything like that. It's going to back to the people that were supposed to represent represent the, the concerns of those counties back there. And so you can't do this. You do it officially. With the, with the force of the people saying, if they don't do it, then we might have to, and you don't want us to get involved. And so, again, as I'm moving on here, the U.S. Army inside, you see the interaction in the governments, how they pull stuff off. You see that a, a, an attack on you, a, an invasion on you, is a is a, pro, a real problem. It, it really escalates to war real quickly. And if I tell you about the microcosm of these things we see in little places away, the carnival mirror that reflects back, kind of distorted, but it reflects back nonetheless to us here in the States, what our government does against other people, what other governments so-called do, what occupiers do to other people and how fast this used to used to come right up front and we're finally hearing it how fast when you do an invasion of any kind it becomes war and i'm saying in the united states it's already war they're just they just don't need to they're not trying to rile they have to keep the keep from riling the natives over this that's just another international law as well but iraqi officials say israeli strikes are declaration of war demands U.S. forces exit. So here we have a pipsqueak over there that really hasn't declared its right. It's getting all this support. It's an agent of the United States, and I don't know who's, whether or not the tail wags the dog on this. I think so. But uh, the Israelis attack another, another nation over whatever excuse. And so one nation calls the mere invasion as a declaration of war. And I don't see that reflection in the United States when the army, who is supposed to be a not invading the states, invades a state, or it claims to, or sets it up to, causes alarm in the populace, and it continues as a discussion. When in fact, it's really the declaration of a war. And uh, more uh, this week about the Israelis being involved, and I really, I keep thinking about this, I really have discussions in, in, about what this Israeli thing is. It, again, it's not Israel. I think we can, we can, well, I was looking at it again here a few days ago, or last night or something about, what's going on in the Middle East, and they want it, and this biblical connection that that's claimed in the Abrahamic law and all that. The, there's just no proof for the authority to do any of this, folks. I just don't understand. Uh, wherever I look, you have to call it Israeli and not Israel, because Israel are the Israelites. The Israelis claim Abrahamic. That would be before even Israel was existent. And they may have be able to claim that, but that's only Hebrew. That's Semitic. That's a language. It's not a people. And right there, at the same time, where do you go? 
is Israel, uh, what was it, Isaac, was Abra uh, Abraham's son, uh, and Abraham had Ishmael, Ishmael, who became the Arabs. If you're going to go jump up into Abraham, you better find some son to come from in, for the for these, uh, what ends up being Zionists, the Israeli today, they can't pick up Ishmael. They're the, they're killing another, they're the ones attacking other, other Semites. And there's a discussion on Twitter about, uh, it's interesting what people will do in the discussion is talking about the distinction between Zionism and Jewish, uh, Judaism and all that, and anti-Semitic. And then there was a discussion that semi anti Zionism needs anti-Semitism. To me, folks, I haven't found where, and you can anybody can contact me to discuss this to clarify this for me. I don't see how Zionism is Zionism is anti-Semitism. It's not that they need it; they are that. They're they're a political movement that's happened at the end of the 1800s, taking claim of things. And the people that are let's say the orthodoxy, they have a claim, but it's only in part. Like uh, the, if you will get in the Bible side, it's only there'll be one twelfth of all the people that can be there. And so, to me, the, the discussion around Zionism needing anti-Semitism, as I saw, or bringing it up as a distinction, is invalid. And this is the other thing I noticed, like this week, is my stuff I collect. There, we make invalid positions to make our to be able to discuss it. And I've told you before: stop making arguments. Get to the fact and lay it down, and that's it. There's nothing more. It's, if you will, self-evident. But to me, it's, Zionism, as a rabbi was saying, and a rabbi is probably that's not a priest. You see that you see in the Bible a break. A complete break in the system where the priest disappeared. And But a rabbi says that, uh, and I was looking through a chain of uh, emails, uh, I mean, Twitters, uh, that, that, that Zionism needs anti-Semitism. No, it, Zionism is anti-Semitism. It's a political movement. And it's it, it it doesn't mind to go kill Arabs. And there's a, a even a distinction, I believe, in the Koran that one part of it says you love uh, uh, the Jews, Jews now not Israelis, will love uh, Arabs, and, and then another part says uh, you got to convert them. I mean, it's just nonsense all what we do. But from the le point of being at a place and being uh, br the brotherly love and the living and harmony and the peace has nothing to do with any of that. They can't justify what they're doing today. They use these things as examples or um, as tools and weapons, like you'll find everywhere. I keep telling you, it's no different than the extension of the weapon that we have in the United States for alternative dispute resolution. They create the dispute. They come in with the, the, the they present themselves as the people to be able to do something to help you. They have the solution. And they create the record to make it look like they're justified in bringing you a, the solution, which ends up being your demise. It's This thing plays out over and over. So as little as a, a, an Israeli strikes Iraq to do whatever Israelis believe that they want to do was determined to be a re declaration of war. So when do you, I guess the, for the United States, when does the military, do they have to finally strike or do you just let them come and, and invade your place and and that's still okay? And people in the United States aren't making these distinctions other than to be alarmed and not moving it forward. Another thing came up today, uh, this week. Recent Israeli attacks significantly weakened Syrian air defense systems. This was talking about last June when we had the story about the Israelis attacking another sovereign country. Now, the Israeli called state isn't actually lawfully recognized. So they're a rogue tool and weapon. That's why I say that we don't know whether the tail wags a dog, but they're not on their own. They're getting paid to be the mercenary uh, to do other work. It still means that the United States is attacking other nations. But in the face of this, the Israelis were attacking Syrian air defenses. Air defenses. They're taking away, you know, like if this is down to me and you, I would have uh, somehow the ability to take away your defenses as I'm attacking you, and no one says anything about that. It can't be a good rule, uh, just generally. Uh, but So this, uh, this rogue occupier is allowed to run free in the world to do harm. And everywhere it turns, it, as soon as it invades, it becomes a war. It is, it is a problem when that's what you see. They're like warlike people, and there's a whole study that you can find that that's what they are, if you go that way. I don't tend to go the, the way of that. But that's the point is that you can make the rationale work, but these people are not, not good. They're not, they're not living in harmony, don't intend to live in harmony. And then they have no history, but they attack. And so out in the world, we see that they're attacking and people are taking offense. 
we don't see that same attack happening against the people themselves in the United States. As I told you, there's a war in the United States that people don't recognize. It's transparent to you, but your, your whole nation is becoming to look like Syria. It's looking like every place that the Israelis are attacking in the Middle East. You don't see that, though, because it's coming different to you here in the United States of America. I'm, I'm astonished, actually, but I don't know what more to say about that. I just sit here with my mouth agape a bit, uh, mouth breathing, I suppose. Why don't people see this enough to start actually integrating their action instead of putting it uh, in other places or not at all? When the, It's like you're taking advantage of a place that says, you can get through if you do nothing, and we'll take advantage of you as you will, and that's your, that's what you... That's how you justify it. You, you'll, you're willing to pay that price instead of saying, wait a minute, this is a place to not have it happen. And it was, I better, I have to work to stop it. And this is where I keep telling you it keeps coming back. What they're going to do out there, they're going to come back and do there, here in the United States. And here it starts to show up. The United States Border Patrol and an Israeli military contractor are putting a Native American reservation under persistent surveillance. Now, does this look any different to you? It doesn't look any different to me. It doesn't look any different to you than the Israelis putting the uh, surveillance over Gaza. And this is supposed to be, this is in the United States of America over a people that are in reservations. Uh, and that's if, you, if you're one of the minds that believe that in the United States you don't live on a reservation generally. The other type of concentration camp or open air prison now what, it's highly consistent that the Israelis not the Israelites remember this is I guess I ponder when I talk about the, the Bible you, you go back through the, gene, the so called genealogy you go back through genies wow uh, you go back through the, high, the lineage of uh, hierarchy the, the begats and you start putting people and placing people where they belong you'll find you'll find quickly that there's no claim that can be made by anybody who is a Semitic-speaking man or woman. It ends up quickly going back to Mesopotamia, not not Israel today. Anyway, getting over to this, these same people that were dumping a lot of, the United States government dumping a lot of money into, you don't see this technology coming from America to go do this. No, you see it from this little a tyrant over there, occupier over there in the Middle East, that Israeli military contractors are working with the United States Border Patrol to actually look over a Native American reservation, another concentration camp in the United States of America. Now, if you don't think this is the practice coming to fruition for the rest of the United States, you're not paying attention. If they're willing to do it to, to the uh, Iraq or uh, the Gazans or, the, and I even say it that, because that's that, they're Palestinians that don't have their land. The uh, whatever, Whoever is over there getting beat down by what the United States does through this little, uh, this little occupier and contractor for war. They're doing it now to your people in the United States of America, the ones that already victimized the first time. And I can't say, I don't know what to say more about, this is just the, the condition that we're in. I don't necessarily believe I need to go back and start worrying a whole lot more about how we are to then what we did to a bunch of people. I didn't do that. I probably wouldn't have done it, but that's not me. And I can't decide about, I can't discuss what's already happened. I can only take what's going on now and seeing if we can extend protection to, well, first of all, everyone, right? And then we see the evidence of its encroachment in little places. I've told you what's happening back over in the, so in, uh, the Middle East. It's going, it's going to happen here in America. If you didn't already recognize it, here's, the, I think, the first, the first notice to us. They're actually going to take under the, under the war of terror, and national security, they're going to set up a surveillance system around a, a, a Native American reservation. And you need to read the story about it. You see how you just put yourself in the place where they're going to build this up. Would you want to live there? But the, And these are supposed to be Americans? Yet they're doing it. And this is the, this pretends the future. If you don't understand 5G and the Internet of Things and all this other stuff. Uh, cryptocurrency, the blockchain. I, I hope everybody understands blockchain's not decentralized. You have to go to the ledger, folks. You, you live in the ledger. That's your life. And they can, whoever controls that ledger controls you. And however they control all the ledgers will be pulled together. I'm, I'm waiting for the day they start, when this thing starts to settle out, they start monetizing block uh, blockchains and, 
and, and whatever, of coins and currency, whatever. It's going to be kind of interesting to watch when that happens. Uh, maybe longer than I'm going to be around, but anyway. Uh, Snowden leak, okay, so let's get back to the Israelis uh, about how they tie us up into these systems. They do surveillance states. The Israelis are, uh, the Middle East is telling us a reflection uh, of what's going on in America, and we look and we see it happening, and I hear crickets about it. But uh, I'm going to pull some tab up I had from, I don't even know, months and months, uh, maybe a year ago. I've got so many tabs again, it's it's a, a, really a joke on what there is to talk about. There's so much leftovers, we I couldn't do even do a broadcast now like Grimm did to try and settle out the problem of having to speak so much about things. But uh, and I want to bring up a story that happened a long time ago. New Snowden leaked memos, or, or actually a reminder, show NSA aided Israel's targeted assassinations. So this this little tab uh, where it says a, a couple of new bombshell leaked NSA documents from the Snowden archive published days ago in the Intercept confirms extremely close level of cooperation between American and Israeli intelligence services, especially as part of the so-called global war on terror since 9/11. What did I just say about this, folks? It was exactly what I'm talking about. This is a close relationship, and uh, the government, the United States government, works with the Israelis to go do what they do to assassinate people. And then you hear today that the U.S. Border Patrol is working with the Israeli military contractors in order to do surveillance that happens to be targeting a reservation. And they have all their reasons why it's all invalid when you look at it, but they have the reasons that are plausible. And how I, why I tell you you have to think in a certain way in order to start to be able to counter what's going on. Snowden leaked memos show how NSA aided Israel's uh, targeted assassinations. And then you hear the, blo the Border Patrol is using, is creating a, with a military contractor to keep tabs on, a mili on a, an Indian reservation. I'm pretty sure, I mean, what makes you think that those, those that thing doesn't get expanded? They start turning, turning out. Remember, remember the way the other agenda, the Agenda 21 global governance thing works. They're going through your ports and your transportation systems, right? Your ports. There's a port at every international airport. And they, they get 120 miles around that to, to be able to eventually come in and say, on no more due process than we have a hunch, we're going to put you underneath the scrutiny. And that's more than you being presumed as an enemy combatant. This is, how I think, how we're seeing this this condition where they're now, TSA is now going everywhere. You, you Underneath the... I can't remember. Oh, the, the war the war on drugs. That's another inroad. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Grimner puts in the one chat. Russell uh, Means told us all about it years ago. Yeah, we were all. He he brought it out. The thing, the power about Russell Means is that he was the Indian on the reservation that was telling the Indians about the reservation and turning that on. Say, American, you white Americans, all you other Americans, if you don't think you live here, and that was a you know. It, it has its own power for him to say it more than maybe I would to say it. And so it was a reflection of the truth. And if you don't pay attention to that, for me, it was confirmation of everything uh, that I was seeing. Again, why do I look for confirmation? Because you, you don't know if you're a nut. You don't know if you just went down the wrong track. I've been really diligent to make sure I don't go around down the wrong track. I saw lots of people going down the wrong track. And I said, I don't want to be one of those guys or gals. And I'm here today to talk the way I do. Whatever whatever people want to listen to, I don't know. How they want to take it, I don't know. But it's an ongoing condition. It's an ongoing constraint. What is it, like a noose coming around our neck as a society on many different levels. And here's another one that comes out. We show, again, it's not hard to come up with the statements on how it's wrong. It's harder to avoid being sucked in, being made party to something and sucked into it to prove a point, and then you got to fight for your life in order to prove it counter in a system that may not want to see it. But here's another example of another type of attack that's going on against the United States of America, and whether people want to bring it up to this and whether they want to give recognition to what we did in 2013 on suing uh, against the Bar Association and the two political parties on this point called sustainable development and using the term climate change as a weapon, uh, I don't have any doubts. This is not my opinion. These people agreed to it by default. So uh, when I saw the climate change thing come up, I also read the documents before it was coming so I could predict all this. But it took someone to be attacked and then through through processes uh, turn out that uh, that we now see the 
a problem with this so-called climate change. As I've told you before, it was uh, Michael Mann-made, not man-made, Michael Mann, man-made. It was Michael Mann-made climate change. And uh, Michael Mann sued Tim Ball, which was a, a climate sci- actual climate scientist. And this is where it starts to get screwed up. Everyone thinks that what's coming out of the IPCC is climate science. It, the, the science, so-called scientists that talk about it are climate scientists. This is not about science. And this is where I keep talking about don't make, don't get into an argument on a fraud. Call out the fraud and then you don't have to argue it. But I see so many people slipping into wanting to argue. I don't know why. Maybe they like to hear themselves talk. Maybe they like to tell, use that to tell people a lot of what no, they know. But to me, it's uh, something we waste a lot of time in some regard. And we, and we focus on the wrong things. This whole issue causes this climate fraud to be continued if we try to prove how the so-called climate science in the IPCC is bad. And I'm going to get onto it right at the end of this. I'm going to explain how that eventuates itself. That what we see and what we're told may not be incorrect, but it's not properly applied. And it gets us onto a different tack than the one that we actually should do, which would, in my at least in my interpretation, bring us a lot quicker a lot farther quicker. Breaking news for all of you climate change adherents and those deniers and heretics out there. There was a lawsuit that Michael Mann sued Tim Ball for defamation for saying Michael Mann complained that Tim Ball called him names and it wasn't justified. Uh, We talked about this suit. We let it ride. Uh, The breaking news is that the court has dismissed the case of Michael Mann against Tim Ball. The Supreme Court of British Columbia dismisses Dr. Michael Mann's de- defamation lawsuit versus Canadian skeptic climatologist Dr. Tim Ball. Full legal costs are awarded to Dr. Ball, uh, the defendant in the case. Now, this story is written, I'm pulling off, this is a Principia Science uh, website. It looks like uh, John O'Sullivan, who writes this article, was helping on uh, with Tim Ball. The point here is I want you to understand uh, the case this is not something that you say that climate change was disproven. Uh, the, the whole term climate change is a political statement. It, it begins as a political, it's fabricated and designed to be a political statement. I've told you all about this. The 1985 documents that explain how scientists would, act, um, political lobbyists would look like scientists. And the best science was the BS, was the thing that they were going to now bring forward to fortify these political lobbyists looking like scientists in order to advance this agenda. This is really what's underlying all this. This case, however, isn't a declaration that climate change is is wrong. What it is, it's a procedural problem. Uh, and I, it still says a similar thing, but you have to say it in a particular way. Uh, when you read through the case, you're going to find out that Dr. Tim Ball, who was being sued, filed a paper, uh, a motion to end the case based on the fact that Michael Mann, who undertook to present his method and his data, did not over many years, did never produce those under a stipulated agreement to to settle the case if Michael Mann would produce those methods and figures. He never did. Dr. Tim Ball moved to dismiss the case because well, Mike, uh, Michael Mann decided that his data was his own and it was more valuable to keep it private than to, to defend its case. And so be careful on what you, how you say this. The effect is that Tim Ball did not defame Michael Mann. And my thought on this was that Tim Ball is, Dr. Tim Ball, is like 80 years old. I think Michael Mann, dastardly dude that he is, I think he's waiting for uh, Tim Ball to die. And so you just hold off, hold off, hold off. But remember, Michael Mann undertook to present his stuff if there was going to be a settlement. They were really good at making sure that that statement to the the courts was was made. And the courts will allow it because they don't want the court cases to go through. They'd rather have an outer court settlement. That's between the parties I would talk to you about all. So my response to this uh, article that uh, 
Michael Mann did not prevail on his defamation case. It was Mann didn't show he's not man. It's not man-made global warming. Uh, failed nine years and upon his undertaking a prosecution to provide his method to prevail against a truth defense. So he did not. Uh, Michael, uh, Dr. Ball presented a truth defense against the defamation claim, and then moved to settle on the condition and undertaking by Michael Mann that he would to Michael Mann present that he was his ac his documents were correct, his statement was correct, which he never produced, and so over a long time, Ball, Dr. Ball moved to dismiss the case because it was delay, and he ought to have come forward. Uh, forthright, and he didn't, and the court agreed with it. So I, as I was thinking that Michael Mann's out of Pennsylvania, that com committed the thought on Friday. It wasn't Sandusky from Penn State, and then as a offside statement, uh, based on what it looked like Michael Mann was doing, Michael Mann waits for Ball to go flat, because I think that he was waiting for him to die, being that he's 80, he's going to drag the case out and never have to give his stuff up, and then maybe even go after the estate after that and make a big hassle out of it all. So here we have a uh, climate change. is not been shown to be a defamation, as saying that it's not real, and that uh, Michael Mann uh, was wrong to present his hockey stick. I'm not going to get into all that, because I already know and knew before this case that climate change is a political statement. It's not science. I've told you this over and over and over again. In fact, it was I have it on the first time I used the, the idea of it's Michael Mann made global warming. I found a Twitter that I put back in 2014. And I said it in an offside way, an inverted logic defamation. Who in their right minds denies Michael Mann made global warming? Now, at that point, I think Michael Mann blocked me off of Twitter, so I've never, I don't want to communicate with the guy I never had before, never will, and I don't need to. The point is, is that this was made up. Why? It's not just that it was made up, and I have, I don't have to, uh, that I need to go through all the figures. I know that what they're doing has a method, and that method makes it look like scientists are presenting science when, in fact, they're political lobbyists pushing an agenda. And so I uh, will end it for myself, if nothing more, until someone shows me it's there, it's not that it has any possibility of being science, and it's not more than a political agenda. I don't have to talk about it anymore. I don't have to prove it out. I don't have to go to contention. Why? When I fight with someone who's a liar, I give him credibility. And so the, I'm going to bring up something I want you to see because a lot of work went into this to expose you to, to expose something to you. It was a lot of effort in proving these things I've been telling you that you can go through and go through all the the inadequacies of what the IPCC presents through what uh, part of the hockey stick presentation that Michael Mann made uh, up uh, for global warming. It, it just can't fly. It was never science in the first place. But I want to present you with a, with a video that was done that I think you need to watch, but I need to, I need to point out something right in the beginning and at the very end of the video. In the very beginning, uh, this is done by, it was called Climate Forcing or Our Future is Cold. Now, I do not believe that it's called forcing. This is actually agreeing to IPCC terminology. Without the sun, there's no forcing. We don't exist. There's nothing to force. To me, it's more of a sympathetic, responsive type thing. It's not a forcing. And I think this idea of forcing is how we get the atomic bomb that explodes and not fusion, if there was a way to do it. Uh, then the other statement, our future is cold. I would agree with that, to my knowledge. Well, we were told before the imposition of the best sciences and political lobbyists that looked like scientists was right before that time they were saying, and it looked like the science wasn't cooked, that we were going into a cold spell that I've talked to you about. They said in 2030 it was about to be the peak, and then we heard here just recently, I think 2012 or so, maybe 2014, they said we have to adjust that a little bit, and they still there's still people looking at that timing. And notwithstanding all this other global warming noise, there's still people looking at this condition that might be coming into is a minimization of our temperatures. And I said, so if they, and I, that's why I tell you, if they get the, the geoengineering wrong and they're starting to block the heat at the time, and they know that, and they're doing it at the time when we're going into a minimum, they're going to deepen the problem. 
So here we have a title, Climate Forcing and Our Future is Cold. I don't agree with the first part. I would have to, at this point, agree with the second. But on my, on my basis, without even looking at, the, looking at the video, what happens in the video, though, is, uh, is Ben Davidson, uh, Suspicious Observers. He says right up front, it's always Im impressive to me how people come off the rail uh, quick, not to diminish what he shows you, but he come, the, the subject matter you have to be focused on is diverted. He comes right up and he talks about the trouble of it being quickly politicized, what he's going to say, and he wants to wipe that off the table. Listen for that right up front. That's the problem. This climate change is only political. And when he wipes it off the table, he then engages a fraudster in their perception and tries to argue how wrong they are. And that's not even the point, because they're, they're committing fraud and treason, essentially, against anybody who would have a, a duty to uphold laws. For the United States of America, climate change is an absolute treason. Again, our 2013 lawsuit gives me that fortification. But right up front, he says, let's take the politics off the table. That is incorrect to do, because now you're going to argue with a, with a criminal. And you give them the opportunity to perpetuate their fraud by arguing some more. And then that divides us. Then I want you to go, so that's, you go read and then look at everything he presents to you. Is absolutely things that I've talked to you about before. Those are not wrong how he goes through all that's there in attempting to, what I think is he says, debunk climate change. He says he was going to do it in 3,600 seconds. I think I can do it in 36 seconds, folks. So watch everything he does in an hour, and then look at the very, very end. And he says this on his graphic. Anthropogenic-focused studies do not properly account the sun, cosmic rays, volcanoes, or the ice age cycle. That's a true statement. But it's not because they intended to. Anthropogenic-focused studies are politics. But he's wiped that from the table. And if he didn't wipe it from the table, he would still produce the video, but on a different reason. And we would be more focused on the future of what needs to happen so we don't do geoengineering in the middle of a cycle that's going to plummet us into winter. winter. Anthropogenic-focused studies are political. He says he wipes it from the table, but he brings it back in the last pane. They do not properly account for the sun or the cosmic. Of course, they're not science. They're politics. So this is where you get exactly right, but it's on a different point. And if we focus on the point that's being made here for the purposes of president, presenting some other valid thing, we're going to miss the whole issue. If you go and look at the bulk of what he's presenting, he's showing you nothing more than I've told you are the models are not sufficient and the models are wrong. And he'll show you exquisitely how wrong they are, how much is out there to understand. And that doesn't even cover it, but good enough. And so this brings up the other point. What he's showing you in the video is every reason why the IPCC is a political statement and not a scientific statement, and their models could never match it, ever. And before they can get close, they have to include everything you're going to see. And I think it's fascinating to watch this video to see everything, how it all interacts. It's kind of a neat insight on what na what's naturally going on. So here's something I would embrace for the information, but not for the reason. And for the, when you chop out, the, you, you cut out from your mind the perception of a political position, you're going to diminish your ability to see every other political position because you think you get to go argue it. And it's not arguable. So what he does in 3,600 3, seconds explains to you how the, oh, most of the ways that we know now that the models are not sufficient. They are not what the models are being used are not science, because all the science they're not including. Perfect. But they weren't meant to be. See, they're political, and he wiped that position from the table. He wipes it from your mind, and I want you to refocus on the fact this is a political attack. This was never science. I will not commingle those two, and this is important to understand, because that's what the enemy is doing, commingling these things, giving themselves authority, because they then made the standard of best science, and it's not. This is a critical uh, understanding for you all. I don't know. I guess it really gets me. It really gets me because this is how we do it. Really smart people doing really good work. 
I don't know why we do it, but we, we want to have a say. We want to put our two cents in. And in fact, we're arguing with a criminal. We're arguing with a liar. What's that, what's that the euphemism about uh, you can fight with the, you know, mud wrestle with the pig and, and the pig likes it? That's what's going on. And so I'm mixed about this presentation. Uh, absolutely not mixed about the fact that he throws off the very most important point in the beginning and then brings it back at the end like it, like it's, like it was supposed to be there. And in the middle, he gives you everything about showing you why the models can't work right now. It, it, that alone is a perfect proof of how you can't know what the you can't know what the IPCC is saying. But what, what he does in in thir, what, three thousand seconds, he says three thousand six hundred seconds. I think I could say in you know thirty six seconds, literally, because I'm not going to engage a liar in a fraud uh, to argue a fraud. I just got to call the fraud out. Because I need to get us, myself, my thought is, why do I want to engage with a guy with a fr making fraud and lying snake oil and all this other stuff when we need to, we may have some real serious things we need to be getting as a people. Our scientists need to be put on task to begin where, where this uh, video says we're failing in our models. And you can, I mean, just think about, when you see this video, you see how much we, I've been telling you that the models can't complete, you start to see what there is involved how little is being stated, how much is being cut out to do the political uh, targeting, the, then you'll realize how far behind we are and, and why, and this is done in all kinds of aspects regarding uh, consensus building. And again, I mean, it underpins this, this is just the whole point. We don't focus on the consensus building as the crime and treason against us and show that this, that it's a fraud to begin with, but that we have all these things we need to do, and we better quickly do them. But we're gonna, we're getting coming in too late. I said uh, to answer this whole thing myself. I said in, again about 36 seconds to read it. You read it comfortably. I was responding to someone else who was arguing relative to climate, justifying that climate science is this and climate's change and all that. Climate's changing, and I say that here. Is not climate is not climate change. Climate change as a term is a political term. It has political meanings. It has political consequences. There's nothing about it. Nothing. That's science. So when you sweep it off the table, you're not looking at science. Uh, you're still arguing against politics, and yet you've wiped it off the table. I say this: that climate changes isn't the political fraud under color of science, called climate change, or AGW, directed by Maurice Strong to help implement sustainableism. Valid only to evidence treason against mankind, it's not science or reason nor reality, but a weapon. Now, I think I did that within 36 seconds for my mind, tells you what you need to be focused on. And you can't redefine and argue, oh well, you can argue science to a gunman, argue science to a gunman, and you tell me how far that's going to get you. It's the same story about walking, you're going to walk up to a bank robber running out with a bag of money and, with a gun and tell him just put down the money and go away. And what are they going to do? They'll take whatever action they're going to do, you're not going to stop it. It's going to continue. And then you're not focused on really what you need to do. But anyway, so that climate changes is not climate change, folks. And so I don't know what more to say. I, if I see so many people do this on other issues as well, and it gets us into an argument. And I've told you, you never go to a court, even the court of public opinion, with an argument. It just creates division. Cut out all the crime and then get to the narrow path. Because I don't know whether you can agree with me on that or not, but uh, can you agree with me that if we get so-called climate changing, which it's doing, but we have different reasons for it. We have different insights that why it's climate changing, not because the IPP, IPCC said based on what Michael Mann made. No, there's a reality going on. And if we don't address that reality, we are walking ourselves into some serious issues. And I suspect because climate uh, geoengineering and uh, persistent contrails uh, became a thing 
the people that are in control and the ones that make uh, the profits and the, whatever, all those people that uh, have the insight of how to control things, they know all that. And that can't, that act alone can't be a good thing. So you can argue amongst me, you can argue with me, you can argue how I'm wrong. If what I'm saying is correct, they're going to get their way. Because we're focused on trying to outsmart, out-argue the, the implausibility of a criminal's actions. That's not determinate by you. Judge denies injunction of New York law repealing religious vaccine. Why do I want to talk about this? Because I'm an anti-vax? Like, no, I want to show you how you do the wrong answer. You, you do the wrong uh, question, you make the wrong question, you make it a question, and you get the right answer back. But if you listen close to the case law, you can hear how the occupier deals with you. And in this case, we're talking about the most powerful place the occupier will deal with you, in its, in its police power. Now, uh, this is an offset. I've, uh, you understand what that means, and then like what we've done relative to uh, smoke in the West, we've been able to use that to invoke the power correctly. And I, I wouldn't be able to say that if we hadn't been able to do it. That I can tell you that means that there's a, a way to deal with all this. But we have to be in the right frame. We have to bring the right point. And now I bring up the idea of the stocking horse. I bring up the idea that there's attorneys that make that either don't know. This is indicative of the mining, the miner. The uh, I don't know. I think it's intentional. But the the one that uh, attorney that's believed to be the mining law attorney is a is a is a crook, or or just in, completely incompetent. And yet everyone supports them and they produce all these cases that lose, lose, lose. They do the wrong presentation of the law and the facts and the property that's not supposed to be interfered with by anybody. That never gets, never gets said. When you do that 100% of the times, I think that's a plan. If my definition of what, a, what someone else's dastardly plan is is wrong, make up your own about what that means. I use that one because, again, if I look put in the worst case scenario, I'm not surprised. I'm working my actions relevant to what is the worst case scenario now. The worst case scenario on climate change is that it's a fraud. If I deal with it with the plausibility of acceptance, I'm going to have I'm going to be there forever, Jack in my jaw, and not get at the fraud. And these people continue to do make their money and do their things and control their people and carbon carbon taxes, punitive harms come on people because you missed it. Judge denies injunction on New York law repealing va religious vaccinations. Uh, you know, I jump in on this. I want to know a little bit about it. Why do I want to know about it? Because I'm not here to do religious, uh, to do uh, uh, vaccine cases. I'm here to help you all who are interested to stop vaccine harms that are foisted upon you under the color of uh, police power, no different than national security. And I've told you there's ways to do it, but you're going to have to do it a certain way. When I read in here, uh, this case, they denied an injunction against religious vaccinations. It's pretty startling. But you have to get in and understand the reasons. And then inside that, you look for the holes, the things where they aren't absolute. And so again, you go to the content, you read this case about how, why a judge denied an injunction. Well, he denied the injunction because an attorney brought it as a compelled speech argument, violative of the First Amendment. And I don't, I mean, I almost have to, oh, I did laugh. Oh, okay, chuckled out loud. I have to laugh at some of these things. I suppose it's compelled speech, but that's not what you're fighting. You're fighting something up against police power, which has the right, underneath the right conditions stated and presented, to pretty much destroy all your rights for the time being. And it's supposed to be a temporary thing. But they figured out how to extend it, and you see that in the War of Terror. You, you saw that a trigger pulled back in 9-11. This place changed, they said. Well, it had already been changed, but now they made it more permanent that it was going to be like an ever-ending. And so, again, people, an, a, 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 an attorney actually ran in and said, this was a, these, removing a religious exemption repealing a religious exemption was a compelled speech case. And the court said, no, it's not. And so this page, uh, this ruling, if you go through it, uh, is instructive. 
of what I tell you about reading the case law, reading the issues to find out whether the attorneys are making the right arguments. And when they're told they aren't, they give the wrong argument and they get the right answer back. You take the right answer and then you go back to what with what you know and you compare the court's response on how it's going to deal with these cases and you apply what you know to make a better path to the one that just failed because that one may have been a planned failure. I don't know. But when I see the how far off the mark this thing was, I have to wonder. But here's what I came to give you the shortcut. Again, I can just give you the lead. I can't, I can't take you down. I can just give you the lead to the path for those of you that are interested. And you start here and you start working through with a different and better thought. You read this report. You see how the, the court treats it. There's other things I already know that you're going to have to go track down. But this little th four points here is going to be a better approach for those of you that want to bring this forward uh, wherever than, than what I see going on with the attorneys doing this stuff who, who, who are promoting sustainable development. Part of that is you're going to get your vaccines. There is a herd out there, and you're going to be part of it. And yet that's the, that little bitty, that's a little crack in the armor of what's going on. Because now you have to put a different hit of mind on, and you say, okay, well, here's a standard. It's not compelled speech. That, that failed. So what might it be? Look inside this case. Here's what I found. The court stated that the court has to do what's called a balance of equities between uh, the safety of the many and the rights being claimed as protected by the Constitution. That's just a really refined way of saying this is police power. I, I, in my, I did a Twitter on this. You'll get, you can get the link to see it. It's just a list of things you can start to think about. I want you to start to understand how to think different. And this is not just on vaccines. This is everything I see. This is a dapple. All this it all runs down the same thing. You have to go find the court case and see how did they treat this. Then you have to refine yourself to say, okay, well, what was the mistakes in how they treated it? And how is it changing? And what's the precedent? And how do I, do I account for that? Like I've been telling you how you can. But, but you have to present the evidence. This is, again, the presumption is against you. And it's certainly where the police power is running. And so you see police power is over the many. Does that say all, folks? No. And that's the interesting little insight I think you need to start to focus on because that brings up other ways to handle this. And it also, you'll see the very last point I make, it actually twists the knife a bit against their claim that herd, herd immunity as an idea works at all. Herd immunity to me is like climate change. It's the catch-all term that's never been actually proven, and they don't have to because they hide underneath necessities for the government for the many. I say that doesn't equal all. That's not all. And so here's your in. One of the ins I saw. Uh, they say less than 1% of all in the story is affected. In other words, those that want the religious exemption and all the other ones that want exemptions only account in New York for less than 1% of all. And I interject here where that equals then, and I did this in Twitter, so I'm kind of doing short phrases, so excuse this part, but I do it anyway. I think it's, I hope it's good enough. That means repeal in excess. The repeal of the exemption is excess of the government's effective standard of 95%. Their the government claims, the so-called health people claim that ni they need 95% success uh, in uh, um, rates of, of, of injection to be successful. The people that are suing constitute less than 1% cannot extend to affect the many under the government's own standard. Number three. Then they also point out, because it states in the case that the courts will not go to the point where you can show, again, the presumptions on you to show this. You have to show this. This is not an extension that you live by innocence here. You have to understand how this works that the court itself makes the standard that the case relied on in, um, where was that, Maine or Massachusetts, I think it was. The courts did not expressly stated that the condition of mandatory cannot extend where it creates cruel and inhuman harms. That's an exception. How do I use that? 
Well, let's go back to the vaccines and let's go to the objective basis, not our opinions of the harm, not our opinions of what there is, not our opinions on, on, on how they shouldn't, uh, how it's uh, affecting our consent. We go to what the standard is. And so I offer this, that given the limitation against imposition for cruel and inhuman, inhumane harm, inhuman harms, it's not shown, these vaccines are not shown safe and with the, uh, they have unpredictable cruel and inhumane harms. In other words, go to the data sheet. The data sheet proves that, and the claims court proves this. And my focus then is the unpredictability of the harms that are expressed in the data sheet are cruel and inhuman. And that's not disclosed to you. And it's only imposed upon less than 1% well under the government standard of 95% needed for effectiveness. And that's the last point. Lastly, 1% to 5% can't harm herd if vaccines work. That, that To me, that last one kind of makes me smile a little bit. That's what I like to do if you understand what I think I'm doing here, if you perceive that. I'm actually attacking their theory right there. And I'm actually saying there, if you can only, you can't show, you can only show one to five percent, you are saying, and you still want to attack these people, you're saying that your theory of 95 percent isn't valid. And therefore we bring question upon the whole vaccination system. So, I guess enough there. I've laid out the, some points to start with. A different way to look at this, don't put your opinion on these court cases. You're not in control. You're not in control in a police power situation or where they declare necessity. You have to find the holes in that. And this court case, the judge tells you this if you read carefully. But no, getting a mandatory vaccines is not a compelled speech argument. That's a failed argument. Don't bring it. And the, the, what's interesting to me is it's been, that argument apparently uh, has been brought before, and it failed. And here we have this. To me, that I mean, my mind just says dapple all over. These uh, uh, environmental attorneys bring all the wrong things to eventually advance the agenda. And if those people, in, uh, if you haven't paid attention, I told you, if you do it wrong, they're going to put more in positions. And look what they're doing to you all. They're now making it a, uh, what, it's now, a, an, oh, now it's all pr- promoted that the, Oil industry is now exploiting the fact that they now can have a new law to cause it to be felony to go protest. I look at that and say, well, I told you that. I told you they were going to use your action against you to get it in the future because you didn't do it right. And they get the leverage because you cause a problem that they can show wasn't wasn't protected even though there was a law that should have never allowed that to happen in the first place. So as long as you stand up and want to do your protest mine all the time, you're missing how they're taking us out. They're missing how you're taking you out and how they take advantage and how they get advantage down the road. I told you, I really told you all about this stuff. And so this was interesting to me only to the, uh, well, it is interesting to me, but it's interesting only to the extent to come here to tell you, don't disregard what you're told about how these cases move forward. And use this guideline. You can use this administratively as well. In fact, the administration has to follow this. And you can open this up. The courts have said that they, that they cannot impose cruel and inhumane harms. The data sheet shows an unpredictable cruel and inhumane harm. Agency, you need to fix that. And you at least get yourself back in the game. On the agency side, it's, a, it's, again, deference to that agency, but when you present the things against this case that says it can't be cruel and inhumane, that they will uh, bring into a, you already know they're bringing in the 95% of success. That, in other words, that, that when they have a, success, a 95% injection success rate, they, they win, then why are they beating on the, the last 5%? Isn't is a necessity for the government. Okay, so... Uh, again, I, I try to bring, I'm trying to remember, I don't know what to say. I want to, I want to understand when I, as I approach these things in other subject matter areas this way, the way I've just explained what I see in this case, just, and this is just four of the points. We have had much better results on the subject matter areas that we have addressed that are just as inhumane and cruel and, and violative and even underneath state's police power. And as I told you before, to stop the fires, we had to come in an unorthodox manner to make a police power harm 
uh, obligating the government to protect against uh, a, a discretionary position on the federal authority, uh, the federal land manager. And so in that case, we actually use the police power to constrain an arsonist and, and then keep people from having to deal a smoke, uh, breathe smoke all, all summer. Now, I can't tell you folks how the, the distinction this year. Uh, it's amazing. So, and then, and then, so now, now, now you see uh, that the court relies on the government, the CDC and all that, that stuff and, and how that uh, corrupt system works to put stuff on you and agree that the bad stuff is okay to kind of whitewash that cruel and inhumane, inhuman things. Uh, and then I get this tab uh, to say, and this is what I was telling you again, if you want checks and balances to help bolster what I'm saying, the courts are guiding you, if you will just accept those parts. You will make more constraints on this condition locally so that it sits within, it doesn't come contrary to those authorities, sits to supplement those authorities in the rights that you do have, that you're going to have to make laws or policies, whatever the initiating action is. In this case, let's say for the smoke, we didn't get the policy, the ordinance that, that I thought we want, that I wanted to see. What we did is we worked it through how it works. We took the secondary step to put it in a mere plan. It wasn't even a policy, it's a plan. And and that wasn't sufficient, at least until now. My, my, my concern is that the future memory gets lost again. See, when you're dealing in the future, like we've been dumbed down and we don't know our rights, that's going to happen again if you don't get certain things placed in certain places for and stated for the certain reasons. And so here we have another, it happens to be an Arizona lawmaker, who is passing, attempting to pass a bill, and this is where you get, I just get the idea. You're going to have to start getting people, wherever, if you have initiative referendum, if you have a representative, if whatever, just a good idea to get voted in local county. This is where you're going to have to start. This is where you're going to have to go. The law, get, in this case, the Arizona lawmaker is trying to get a bill that says all ingredients, side effects, must be disclosed before any vaccine. So let me amplify, and that's all I'm going to say, just the title. Let me amplify that on what I said before, because this came in after. And I said, well, this is great. So how did we work this together? What am I saying before? Giving you a list of four points on how to get in. Don't don't you then set up that the failure to disclose, where it impliedly states that there are unpredictable, cruel, and inhumane harms, and don't you then empower that point by saying that there you must be disclosed in these things, the failure of which qualifies that one point itself to in, invalidate any repeal. I have to pause. I don't know. Did you keep keep up with the logic there? I, my mind just goes so quickly. I don't know if I even communicate right. Okay, so you make the state, you have state's power to dictate the safety of the things by disclosure. There's a contract law. And that becomes, as I said before, part of the way you start to delineate what's cru cruel and inhumane. Uh, inhuman, excuse me. I keep you putting the E on the end. But it's not human at all. Again, those are your, your little animals that are being treated like by the by the husbandry of the government. So here's a proof that you need to make laws to make controls local. This is the state level. I think you can even go down to the county level. And one of the tricks that you have to keep in your mind is how do I take the initial, the existing structure, the existing controls, and find a weakness in them or take advantage of their power in a way that is effective? to actually do the thing it's supposed to do. And in this case, they're saying, you, you, should be, you need to be disclosed of all these things. You're not saying make them safe. You're saying, dis you're saying that there's a requirement to disclose to the public that the, these things that this vaccine, this medicine does. I don't know if, why that wouldn't be a rationale that can be used everywhere, but you know this guy's getting flack. And so this shows you the problem. But it still needs to be done. You need to step up. You need to do the things you need to do. Otherwise, into the future, your little ones are going to be injected with things that you don't know are cruel and uh, can't know for sure are cruel and inhumane, even though the data sheet says so. The claims courts prove it. 
And you could have come in with the right, instead of saying it was a compelled speech problem or an infringement of my religious rights, you'll read why that is not, a, not relevant. You'll be able to better speak to the problem and stop the problem today that won't be put on those in the past that may not have the uh, knowledge because it'll, these so-called medicines are harmful. And, and we don't we don't understand have a real reason why we kind of know it we'll say it we know why but we have no proof that the system will look at that continues to put the agendas on us of control underneath the color of state authority and I tell you when you say it that way because when you find some official working through the color of state authority to harm you that's a felony you may need more proof more uh, uh, black and white in the objective basis policies rules or laws in order to help you out. They were left out before so they could bring this in. So here's an example of you have to make a law, folks. You, you want disclosure? Make a law. You would think that they would be honest and come forthcoming until you find out Title 50's out there. If you, don't th if you ever think I'm straying too far from that license of the government to hurt you, Oh, speaking of hurting you, and they, again, here, this is a guy that says you should have be disclosed of all the things in the vaccine, so you know what's going on with your little, with your child. You think they, you think they care about your child? Well, this next story tells you that they don't, and I, and I bring this this little detail here because this struck very hard in me, the consistency that I found about it. That again, these people do not care about your sons and daughters, and they've got a whole system. The news is full of now this boil festering up and breaking all over the skin of society uh, that the details in this report except for one omission you need to read to see exactly what I found in 2000 happens within child services they got a kid from inside that witnessed stuff that if you listen I don't have a doubt that he saw much, uh, any, uh, did not see any of it. I'm sure he saw all of it, and maybe more. The, a betrayal of trust. That's what this government has become. They use the color of authority to do the to do their dastardly deeds. If you haven't seen this Epstein thing blow up, and why it's been under the surface all this time, what I attempted to expose in the part I did, not Epstein, in the fact of this thing, in your state's coming through your counties, through the judges. I was able to predict through the ju youth judges problem in Pennsylvania again with brotherly love, and then to Sandusky, then to Penn State, Michael Mann made climate change, these abusers, and then jump over because the connections with Penn State to Europe and Savile popped up. We already knew the, cl the Catholic Church. That's in down there in Italy, if you don't know where that's at. Still in Europe. This is all predictable. The betrayal of trust, child molestation alleged in Contra Costa CPS. I'm going to tell you, you need if you're involved with any of this, if you're a victim of this, if you any of this, you need to read the story and you need to just take notes, folks. Take everything the kid that's got that came out to, you know, says, just write it down as a list of things. Is what I found circumstantially when I was doing the research in 2000 to make my documentary. What they don't explain. And they actually, if you look carefully, they say that the like the girls will go out, so-called run away, and then come back. And they uh, say that they have money. They've been doing doing their thing. They're trained. They're groomed to do this. What they mention is the runaway problem, the actual runaway problem, folks. Those I didn't. I found those are not actually runaways. Now I suppose there's a few, but they're actually used the term to hide the fact that they've been put into service somewhere, into trafficking. And so this, again, this is just a striking, I was shaking my head just saying, there it is. The, guy, the kids saw exactly what I found. The kids saw exactly what I found. Some things I could only do circumstantially. He confirmed that that was going on based on circumstantial evidence. And I don't mean just because I saw one thing. A bunch of facts pulled together to give me the idea it, it was probably going on. And then I want you to pay special, in this story from the Epoch Times, the a betrayal of trust. It's not just to, for the for the children, the kids, the, the little goats, the, your sons and daughters stolen away from you. Because it starts by some father who puts it together 
and goes to the county supervisors and says, I want some relief, and they don't give it to them. Now, you think in a society of justice and brotherly love, and we help our, we help our little ones, and we get along, and we all support each other as we can. You'd think they'd want to help. No, folks, it's not wired that way. Not only is it not the right jurisdiction when you want to give them some plausible deniability about whether they had action power, they don't care because they're probably involved. And that precipitates a court case. And in that court case, they name the judge. Now, that struck me because that's how I came on to it. Learning way back when I had been reading about uh, rules of evidence and court procedures and all that because I want to understand uh, this thing that they have up against us. And I was listening to a video that uh, the late Pamela Gaston had from the court record and it occurred to me I had just witnessed the judge do a cover up based on a ruling that he did that Pamela didn't recognize nobody actually recognized it and she was set just the onslaught of the state against her and Will were terrible so she's focused on something completely different than what I saw the judge do and I went, in my young studying, this is now five, seven years, five to seven years into studying this stuff, I re re thought the, how the judgment, how that decision it was to withhold or evidence and to keep someone from coming in to testify, if you were to extrapolate that down, what that would, what that would do caused my insight into what I'm telling you ends up being what this story tells you is going on. It's not just in Contra Costa, folks. I've told you this is everywhere they can exploit this. I've told you about foster care. I've told you about how they put the nice, shiny families up front. You don't see the dirty, seamy insides of this thing. You see how the government's non-responsive. I've told you, look very carefully. You won't see anybody of any notoriety brought up in these dragnets. It's the low-hanging fruit. Yeah, okay. I go out and just get into this obsession that I never was able to bring out, and yet it's here. And this this story is probably as close to this was could have been, I could have probably used this as a as my storyboard that I had to put together right before they've collected me up and made my life difficult. How they knew, folks, is is an interesting an interesting interest. But here it is for you, those of you that need a lead. I, I don't know that I would doubt about anything that, that he says, although I don't think that it was strongly presented that a runaway isn't necessarily a runaway. They're the, likely the kids that got lost, and they're going to get lost and put into that system that we now hear is the, the Epstein thing. And it's not just that. And again, it goes deeper. And, oh, and I mean, I can't even imagine. You want to talk about how something something could be transparent to you? Put a bunch of people in the system that understand the system, and they all have something to gain from it. And they all have something to lose from it altogether, without a check and balance, with covering checks and balances. What I identified in the judge. Why it's important because that becomes that a judge becomes critical. It, for me, in this story about identifying how this is actually being able to be moved forward w without anybody understanding. You think it's authority. You think this judge is not just a bar member. You think he's Lily White. You think she's Lily White. That was the bigger shock, the women. Well, if, if anything told me that women today have lost their motherhood was in looking in this system. But did uh, Epstein have a female cohort, folks? Did what the Nexium have a cohort, female cohorts? This is really, in a way, shocking too. And then I wonder. I look around and see all the abuse that's going on here. Wonder why we have all this zitism, all this ke uh, sexual identity problems. I've told you. I predicted all this here, folks, in the news, just to tell you, it's all there. It's all a cause. In, and there's people that if you sit around, keep arguing amongst yourself, or you get lost in what you're told, you're never going to see this. 
the happenstance interpretation of something I saw on a video set me on this course, folks, something no one saw. That was where my knowledge kicked into doing something. I didn't reach the goal. They took me down. They tackled me at the one, literally at the one yard line. My project was almost done. And I, that's, again, a proof that they were watching the whole time waiting. Anyway, a betrayal of trust. I want to let you know it's not just Contra Costa. The story by the, 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 the son that gets returned to the, the mother and the, and the daughter gets returned to the father who went to the, the council. Ask, you have to ask the question, if, why were they taken in the first place if they were returned, folks? What was such the problem that they were taken in the first place? It, and I tell you, it takes a mother and a father or both or whoever to go after and make the son or daughter that's been stolen a thing, a thing that is put out to make a shining example of they better be treated right and you better do this right so they don't get dropped back into the system and the story you read in this story in this report happens to them. And I guess I'll move on. Because they don't care about your kids. They're just animals, humans, to be husbanded and abused and treated whatever they want to satisfy those in control. And I, in some regard, really, the women that are involved in this was a shock, really a shock. I just totally uh, out of left field from my upbringing, my, my, that motherhood thing, all that. Just, wow. It's not just Cain and Abel. It's the, the, Eve, <laughs> what have you done? Wow. It's amazing how fallen we really are and how... How it works and festers under the system, under the surface of the system, and we think it's okay as long as we don't see it. I guess it's well, it's transparent. It's fine. We want everything transparent. We keep asking for it, and they keep giving it to us. But they don't care about your kids, your little goats. And I talked to you last week. Brought up the idea. I think it was last week. We're talking about that the phones, notwithstanding their technology, is made to to change physically change your sons and daughters. Uh, that we now found out that they're radiating more than the FCC allows. Well, goodness for the FCC at that point, right? Because at least we have a standard now to, to balance it. The Apple and Samsung are now sued over cancer risk from cell phone radiation. I think that's going to be a tough suit. The point is that it takes someone to act, folks. It takes someone to sue these people because the government's not going to do it to protect you all. This is not just about the little ones. This is also about you. And they talk here, the meanwhile, the health debate around smartphones heats up. Well, that may be a misdirection of mine, because that's the only standard is the heats up problem. And I just found, I was just doing some re reading, uh, and it was in an interesting document about how that actually gets, that thermal thing is uh, measured through the increased temperature of a of the rectum of whomever they are testing, the subject they're testing. This. That's all the thermal energy heat is, if it affects you enough to raise your, your bottom temperature. Now, I thought that was pretty disgusting, just on the, the fact of, of that as an interpretation, but... Where did I, I get this? It was in an interesting document that apparently resurfaces, and I can't remember all these documents, but this one came through the website, and I saw it. And if you want to know about any of you interested in not just the suit, but, but see, we got to get the standards that they make this stuff. They violated the standards, apparently. That'll just be a test on whether, they, whether that was done in manufacturing, and that'll be just a fine if they do so or whatever, the, you'll just see the ramifications roll out, but it won't change the standards. So if we focus on the fact that a Apple did it to us and, and that they complied with the rule, we agree with the rule when the rule may not be valid. This is the same problem about going after climate change. Not that climate changes, but that the political dis state the term of climate change. If you wipe that off the table, you've messed yourself up with getting at the real problem and actually changing it in the future for the better. And I want to restate it. You take everything in the video about the so-called climate forcing, you, or yeah, and, and you uh, now take all that and say, but you, you scientists aren't applying this in your models. We require that these be part of your models until you can prove that they're not a part of this dynamic. You're going to look at reality best as you can model it, not a political statement. Remember, it was initiated by Maurice Strong's work funneling this decision through committee until he got the outcome based in a consensus process, which brought consensus. That is not reality. 
That's politics. And so, but so I got this link came through, and it's called. Uh, it's from the Department of uh, what of, a, of Defense or uh, what was it? The Department of Intelligence or something here. I'm trying to look and see here without getting too corrupted. <laughs> Where am I on the tabs? Uh, Defense Intelligence Agency. And the title is The Biological Effects of Electromagnetic Radiation, parenthetically, Radio Waves and Microwaves, Eurasian Communist Countries, you, who was done in, I think, 1976 from memory. And this talks about the harms. This is done in comparing Western and Eastern governmental in institutions. And for those of you interested in 5G smartphones and phones and how they do it, how they're hurting you, I'm talking about silent weapons for quiet wars, all this frequency stuff, all this thing that they want to stop looking at. Interesting on page VII, it explains for the West, what, in the West, remember we've got a commerce nation, it's why these companies do what they do and get away with it. It's why it's only pay a fine after they $100,000 on a billion dollar profit. It's how this place is wired. It's how we've been quiet to allow it. So I just want to read this two paragraphs for those of you. Uh, I found this one part of the second paragraph uh, opens up. It, it, the cracks are here. You want to open up a can. It allows you to come in on the reason why they're not doing what they should be doing and then offers you throughout a, only a 35-page document what may be at play that they need to be looking at. In other words, you go back to the vaccine thing where the in the police power, they still couldn't extend a mandatory upon things that could be shown to be cruel or inhuman. You start to phrase some of your dialogue that way. Not all of it, some of it. You always give yourself other places to go. But let me read just two paragraphs of this 35-page document. You go through and you see what they list as being available that isn't checked, and this is the reason why it's not being checked here in the West. Let me read just from the second, uh, uh, from the uh, paragraph or two. No unusual devices or measures for protection from radiation exposure were noted, but a continued stress upon personnel protection in occupational situations was apparent. This talking about the communist countries. Here, protective goggles and clothing are recommended when working in regions of microwave radiation. Think 5G and your radios and all your phones and all this stuff. Although some differences in standards remain between the various communist countries and between military and civilian standards, the communist standards remain much more stringent than those of the West. An exception to this may be Poland where the recent relaxation of their standards has occurred. This is the first significant shift of an East European country away from the standard first set by the USSR in 1958. This is the Russians did it here, folks. They're so much hurting their people that they actually have bigger standards, apparently, as this intelligence report shows us. Sec next paragraph. Interesting. Insightful. If the more advanced nations of the West are strict in the enforcement of stringent exposure standards, there could be unfavorable effects in an industrial output and military functions. The Eurasian com communist countries could, on the other hand, give lip service to the strict standards, but allow their military to operate without restriction and thereby gain the advantage in electronic warfare techniques and the development of anti-personnel applications. Now, I found the second part of that second paragraph more important, actually, than the highlighted portion you'll find in the document when you get the link. I also see a split, and they mention it, industrial output and military functions. If all we have right now is to split that, we have the ability, based on that statement right there, why they're disregarding safety, as understood by the United States government and is being implemented, to have less stringent standards because it interferes with what? Con com com uh, production and commerce. And that may not be a high enough need in the, in, in the nation over your, their obligation. Again, now you're using their obligation against them, the health, welfare, safety, morals, all this other police power, that you break this apart and you say, well, the industrial output needs to be more regulated. Here's the United States understanding that. 
and giving lip service to a stricter standard that would keep people from being harmed. And the reason why you do that is to make an inroad back into at least the industrial side, because I don't think you're going to be able to stop the military side, the warfare for national security purposes. But that then, then you rely on the fact that, well, they can do the testing and they can develop it. They can have their own standards, but it's not public. And it never gets used in the public. It gets only used in warfare. Now, that was still going to come back in your streets in the United States because you haven't shut down the war, the ongoing civil war. But I'm not talking about that part. I'm talking about looking at these documents as ways to get the proof you need to get back in the game, and you can actually make a difference better than saying, oh, well, this is not, com it's interfering with, my it's compelling my speech because these microwaves are causing me to think funny. That, that, that should be an inhumane harm that is not al allowed to the government, as we saw the vaccine standard be. You bring that standard to this one. It's still police power. You see, now, as I say that, I now see to tell you, one police power concern is consistent with the next police power concern and its constraint. And so, if you, uh, I hope you're listening on what I just said here. If you just, this VYI, I, I found fascinating on how to break back in to say, wait a minute, now we're going to have to split this. And it's apparent, because you know about this, FCC, that it'll affect your industrial output standards. Well, it's why you saw Apple and all these other companies exceeding the standard, because they know they can pay, they can pay the penalty and keep going. There's no real harm about that, actually. Because why? It's because about the bottom line, even in vaccines. It's all the same, folks. Now, there's more. Please, I'm just giving you the lead. As I said in another in a Twitter, I said I'm giving you the lead. Now, now I'll put that in a mining context because these words are very interesting. I give you the lead. That's what a prospector does. He follows a lead. Once he discovers, another mining term, discovers a valuable mineral deposit, it's a load. So you need to, I give you the lead, you go discover your load within the subject matter, valuable subject matter that you want to make right. See, I did that, folks. Isn't that cool? That language is so fun. So, very interesting, admission. And they say here, they take a notice that those that don't have a standard are actually able to make electronic warfares that can outdo the United States where we did have a standard. I'm saying... Likely, you're not going to break that one. They will go there. So once you break out the domestic, if you will, the industrial consumer from the military, and then, then there's, I think, protections against the military coming in and directing them in. We just haven't actually put them in place. And they tell you that this techn electronic warfare techniques is a, this technology is, elect is for warfare techniques, and it is anti-personnel in its application. The words are here to lay out the, the the bullet points on your cause to get back into the game and shut down. Just expose they're not doing enough, and they know that. But here, you put it around, you flip them around jujitsu-like. Now they're going to have to show how they didn't know that. you got the document. How did you not know this? And now that you do, if you didn't, what are you going to do about it? And then they'll bring up their commerce standard, and you just have to know how to hit them with the fact it doesn't rise up enough to cause inhumane harms. That's all the vaccine does, actually. So, anyway, so very similar. I don't know, uh, like I, I told you, I read, I th if you hear me talking, I think you hear me reading a little bit different, because I'm not just reading for the information and the knowledge it gives me and the shock that it, you can see these people are doing to us. But Title 50, folks, I think I, I, think I put, a, put that in a Twitter. USC 50 is this. And yet you hear me not being defeated by so-called necessity, inevitability. There's a different way to think about this, I believe. And I think as we've approached it that way, the way I think, and what we and I do in applying these, these standards or the lack of them or the constraint or the limitation and looking for uh, any terrain we can take. This is an example of the, this last paragraph examples us in those ways as well. Like I said, I would say that they're looking particularly the importance to the military in a, in a defense intelligence condition is industrial output and military functions. To me, industrial output is the Trading with the Enemy Act, folks. I mean, Title 50 is there underwriting 90, uh, Section 12B, 95B, I think, 12 USC 95B. Oh, that's industrial output. Military, that's its own game, and that's 
you're going to have to give regard. I would just go ahead and cleave that immediately. And I would say, okay, we'll give them that much, and then we'll just folk, make sure that we'll start, like, don't let North Carolina happen. Don't let the military weapons come into your sheriff's office. That's what, where you stop it, and it hasn't been because everyone is crickets. That's why I guess I say, I th when I say that to you, I, I, I say, why has this been so hard? Why have we missed this? Why are we living underneath these standards? In particular, with the child services, you find out that's a that's a what do I say? What kind of a what kind of a crime is that that exists in your system? We're oblivious to. I'm not saying I knew it before 2000 or so. I didn't. But but now you know it. Now you see it festering up, and it's in the it's in the halls of everywhere. The most depraved, the cockistocracy is everywhere. We are up to us to stop it. These people know why they're not putting the standards down. Apple is let to do what they're going to do. I would say they're let to do it until someone caught them because they need that power output over the maximum if they can get away with it because of their silent weapons for quiet wars. Your Internet of Things are weapons. And the... In part, the Israelis are making all that. How many how many stories have we talked about fabricating DNA and keeping track of everyone's voice? It all comes out of the technology coming out of the Israelis. Who allows that upon themselves? Unless it's not you and someone's warring against you and you is transparent to you or you keep your head in that acme behind a woodshed bucket of sand. Now, this biological effect thing, you've got the report now. Uh, like I said, I, I thought, I didn't know if I saw, I couldn't remember, so many articles, but I, what I read in here now hit me a do, new way to tell you about it in conjunction with Apple, in conjunction with all this other stuff, in conjunction with the state's police power to do certain things. See, they're going to say they have a need to do it. You can you can interject uh, balance. if you, There's the balance, remember? Always the balance. They even have balance underneath NEPA and the environmental laws. They don't balance it right, but you have to be there to witness that in, incorrect, in, the imbalance of it, in, or the balancing of it incorrectly, right? And then we bring out the fraud. You can't balance to a fraud, right? You don't even argue about it, right? It's always, again, uh, what I said earlier about the, the, uh, the climate forcing video and the throwing the polit politics off the board in the front is your demise. You're going to be perpetually arguing with someone that has more power than you and more, uh, more influence. And I can tell you, IPCC through sustainable development has better infrastructure and more money than any of you listening and anybody that won't listen to me can pull together. Already functioning. As I told you, we sued it in 2013. It doesn't go away. In 2019, it was back. We shut them down again. They won't go away until we shut it down. And just a couple of us can't just do it. It does have to be more people. Is it possible to shut this down? And now from the biological effects, well, apparently I got a, I think it came through the RLM chat uh, last week. It's okay. Well, it's a, a year-old story, but here's a success story. Can you stop this stuff? Uh, council rejects construction of telecommunications tower at Wilson Creek. Uh, Mullumbimby, I think that was Australia, I think, I don't know. Anyway, here's a link, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Safe from radiation, we won. Okay, I don't know where the story goes from in a year, but there's a group of people, if you didn't know where to start, contact these people, say, how'd you do it? Understand the United States is a little bit different. You have different federal authorities to go through by certain standards. You have to go after the people that make, that test those standards and attack them as well. I told, I've told, I think, uh, told some people about how this works here. In your state, you have to go through the uh, administrative procedures and the commissions, the utility commissions that are running this out have to be attacked where they don't. They run alternative dispute consensus processes out before they really look at your rights. That's the police power you bring against their, the state itself. You show like this biological effects document. Said, did you consider these? And when you didn't, how'd you do what you did? And if you didn't and you'd consider that, you're violating the law and you're committing treason and you're committing felonies. And so how about if we just back this thing down? We back it up and we start doing this more correctly. Now, you do it like that as well. You get an implied rulemaking because now they can't move on their, on their failure to follow actual law. And I don't like it that you have to be there. I don't like that I have to be there to witness this, but when you got mass crime going on, you got to stop the riot. You got to stop the the interference. You got to you have to know something. You have to have a better word in your mouth. You have to not submit. You have to really be oh, beholden to those things you say are violated in you. A lot of us don't. I, mean, I can't say I'm perfect. I mean, I. I, you know, I, I'm, I got my foibles too, but I try to limit all that. Again, I told you last week, so, uh, the, uh, the protocols of the elders of Zion, the, the manual on how you can, uh, of your fail, of your frailties and failures that are being exploited. 
it really takes a, a big, really a deep thought to start checking that, where we develop kind of bad habits here behind the woodshed. And we try to straighten that out, and so we don't do that again. We limit it or as best we can. Now, here's a story about how we do that to ourselves. But that it's caused trouble, and they can that will be exceeded. And even though there was a ruling that we can't get a remedy from the TSA in this war of terror against us, in the, again, biological effects of their my, uh, millimeter waves or less, a special wave machine, and if you say no, then they get you beat up, beat up on you some more. Well, now uh, there's a decision. A federal court of appeals ruled travelers can sue transportation security officials for abusive conduct, stripping the controversial agency of the government's immunity that has protected them so far. Now, you've heard me say that. You just have to go, not just, but you have to go in and show that they don't have the right of the immunity. Uh, someone apparently has. They went through the Federal Tort Claims Act to do so. I'm not even analyzing the point. I've told you that you're going to have to start addressing this. I've asked you to do it where the government has also said to do it before it becomes a problem to you, and that's the administrative side. And you bring all the things I've been telling you, even today, against their authority, against this imposition. And I would lead, I would lead, you don't have to, you can find something more powerful, with my presumption of innocence, not allow them to take that away. Because there's no there's no due pro, there's no police power in a presumption of innocence to, to wield, and I'm also not affecting anybody in a presumption of innocence that's denied to me. Anyway, there's a ways to go through the discussion on that. But you can sue them. I've told you that. Now now it took a court to tell us all that years. How many years now since 9/11? And you again, you read this and you'll see how how to do. It. You'll see what brings them into into liability. It's, it's, they say it's because of the intimate physical nature of the screening, and they are moved from investigators into law enforcement. And so you got to look at all that, and you got to start to present yourself in through that narrow path. That's the one that's accepted right now in this open air prison. It's the only way you can communicate. I told you a long time ago when they collected me up about this child services thing, I was going to make a documentary on, and when I got out of the uh, out of jail, that the, that the, the, they had destroyed that, and the ev all the all the evidence that it existed, except one simple little handwritten piece of paper was phenomenal in interest. That that I remembered that little piece of paper that I put somewhere, uh, giving a note to someone who was in the in the facility that I was working with. Uh, I remembered that months later, and sure enough, that little note was sitting underneath that, and it it talked about the project that there was no evidence I'd worked a year on. And so, uh, but going back to this, from far news agency, Tehran, uh, they're interested in this one as well. U.S. court rules airline passengers can sue TSA adjudicates for abusive searches. What are you going to allow? What's not an abusive search is going to be the question. Go through this thing to find out what rights they have. But I've asked you to bring in this concept of being presumed innocent and bring in what in that vein, in that framing, makes what them how do they get pulled out immediately even so despite their power so called again you you have to have power you don't you're you're animated by power you don't have a non power you you have to move through an acknowledged power and you have to show how their power didn't rise up enough and you have to i'm telling you if you accept this the unorthodox as it sounds, you have to bring unorthodox powers that are right within your rights. We talked about, we talk about this all the time. Same thing with the passport and all that stuff. So I'm not going to go through the story on this, but you can sue the TSA. We've talked about all this. Uh, what, Jonathan Corbett's hot on some of this. I've asked some of you that are interested, maybe team up, see what you can do. Uh, see how to, to get at this problem where they just trounce you because of the uh, appearance that they are immune and appearance that they have no way to get at them. If they have no immunity, folks, that means of what I've been telling you about the narrow path of vulnerability is there for you to develop. And that's what I tell you to develop at the point of first contact with the cops. And as I say that, be careful. I don't know if I have it up here or not. I think I do, but maybe I should bring it up. No, it's not going to come up here fast enough. Uh, don't, you got a Fifth Amendment right to be quiet. I told you, be careful and listen what I told you. If you don't have what I'm telling you in your, in your, in your repertoire to, 
change the dynamic of the discussion, you need to shut up. You need to use your Fifth Amendment right and absolutely shut up. Don't 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 let me don't let my discussion think uh, empower you to think you can talk if you can't. Just shut up. Fifth, use the Fifth Amendment absolutely. Now I say become the investigative reporter, but that means that you're not saying anything incriminating, and there's going to be be very hard for you to understand how incriminating it is. And I have a link somewhere down the tabs where a guy explains that you cannot speak actually. And I look very listen very carefully. You cannot speak on anything that can be used to incriminate you. And why I say you talk from the black and white law, you're never talking about the event. You're talking about the law that's being either uh, held up or not or violated. And so be very careful when I say that you have a word to change and something to say. You're not explaining yourself. You're investigating the law that was violated to put you in there, to set up a record in the future about that that can't be denied. So and I'll, <clears throat> whether I get there or not today, I'll put that link to that video about the professor telling you how to shut up. Just shut up. And I, I had to agree. I mean, I'd, I've seen that video before, but it was a reminder. And I want to tell you here. Me telling you to be the investigative reporter and, change, and getting the facts you need does not mean you, you speak about the event. And if you do, you, you're condemned. I don't even know what more to say. The advantage is not to you. But you get into a place where you're in an, an interrogation. They call it an interview or whatever they want to call it. It's an interrogation. Shut up. There's nothing you're going to prove there. Anyway, going on here, because of this condition and uh, the TSA were all scrutinized, were turned, everyone was turned into, not just the people in Tehran, the United States, people in the United States of America were turned into enemy combatants. Why, instead of innocent, why you have to go through this nonsense and be subjected to the question of whether or not it's an abuse? You see how they did that and they put the question in their hands to decide? That's another problem you have to get around. I talked to you about that as well, but alarm as Trump requests permanent reauthorization of NSA, uh, the mass spying program exposed by Snowden. And this was a long time ago story. I want to remind you about it. The NSA spy program, if you also notice, the NSA was working with the Israel, Israelis to do the assassination. And now you look at now the, now the military contractor for the Israeli is working with the Border Patrol to look and spy on the reservation an Indian reservation in the United States. Uh, civil liberties groups and privacy advocates raised the alarm Thursday after Trump administration called on Congress to reauthorize the NSA mass surveillance program that was exposed by whistleblower uh, Edward Snowjob. And I still believe that there's a problem with him, and so I'm going to say it that way. You, we have to look around all that's being done. I have a real problem. You, I told you that this was going to happen despite what he exposed because everyone was going to see it and go to sleep, if you will not do what they had to do to shut this thing down en masse. And here it is. And so, uh, there's not a constraint coming down on the fact of of this encroachment that you have the ability to go sue because you think that there, there has been a, an abuse done to you. Remember, the military has very little abuse the military can do ultimately. So, put that into your equation as you see this forward. Why, I say, don't get violated first. Go do your administrative record and bring forth the things I've talked about in the past, which I apologize, I know I'm not that concise on directing you to the past episodes. Law enforcement to flag and spy on future criminals. So together with Trump, it's not looking out for you. He's looking out for the state. I don't know why. I don't know why this comes out this way. He's not doing anything different than the Democrats would do when they come to power if he's not careful. We're really looking at a, a bad 2020, folks. Worse than I've ever thought of. We, if, you, if you want to see how bad it gets, look to see what starts happening. Remember, Oregon is under one of these major single-party controls, and the, and the other party had to flee, but had to run away because of they actually didn't flee. They, they were doing their duty to the people. But you see, that's the point, that we are in a serious future of if we don't, right now we need a balance, even if it's bad, we need a balance, uh, uh, some kind of a balance against this nonsense. Because when it goes one way, you'll watch the agenda roll out with a fury. I told you this years ago. It was coming here to do this. Law enforcement to flag on spy, uh, to spy on future criminals. That's not even new news, but here, here it comes relative to Trump allowing this NSA stuff. 
You know, again, it's in the news to let us give us advanced knowledge. Are we going to take it up? And DEA agents ambush Amtrak passengers with controversial search and seizures. Well, we were told that the TSA was going to expand their, their check-ins. Well, the DEA has been there underneath this other fraud called the War on Terror. Uh, excuse me, the war on drugs. And there's a very important story to read through, and I say read through it to find out how they violate you, how they, how you think it's, uh, how they uh, get you to say stuff where you should remain silent, how they intimidate you. You have to know that. How they will allow multiple violations to people, and these people, these cops are still there because they didn't really find them doing any crime. I suggest don't Again, at the point of first contact, you establish that they're not supposed to do it and that what they're doing exceeds their authority. In fact, you'll hear this is only a, not even a five-minute interaction on these trains. And they get what they need in that time. The Amtrak passengers agree to DEA searches. They agree. And then you wonder where your probable cause and warrants are. They don't need them once you give them okay. And they'll give you sweet talk you in or they intimidate you when you don't. Well, here's the, here's the video uh, if you get, uh, get it through Cryptagon. Of, of a professor telling you you cannot speak. If you're not going to do what I say to make the record about the law that's being violated against you to set the perpetrator up that's in the costume of a of an undercover cop, uh, then you better just shut up. And nine times out of ten, you're going to be okay because they can't move further. They don't have probable cause. They're actually given manifests by the by the Amtrak or people that work for them that are bribed to give this information to them. They know you before you even know that they're there. And so this is a serious uh, insight when you look at their expanding out and that you'll see all the advantage the government has and you have none. But there's a, a, a caveat to this one. That's why I wanted to put in there Amtrak. You give them permission. They're only there for five minutes. You still give them permission. Why? This this is a professor who tells you why you can't in any regard ever talk to the cops. And I would say absolutely, notwithstanding everything I've told you about the record and the point of first contact, if you have nothing more to say, if you just think your rights are, are protected, stop talking. Just don't speak. At best, get this video, find the, the couple citations he makes, uh, write them down and stick them in a little card, and you have them in your pocket when you everywhere. So that when you get confronted with a cop, you say that instead of saying anything else, and that's protecting you. And you say it's just an objection to continuing uh, the, the process, given they have nothing else. And you'll hear how they have nothing else. And so, uh, again, what I've been telling you here, there's a caveat to this one, it's everywhere. The stuff is all over this oppression. And a lot of it's because we don't think correctly. We come in with our, our, our heart on our sleeve, if I understand that euphemism correctly, and we don't really work with what we're supposed to work with. We don't use the standards that the courts are going to use when they come against us. And they have the advantage. And they tell you all in that article from The Intercept. And so we, we can disregard it, or we can put ourselves in a better mindset and we can start looking in a different way, we can start thinking in a different way, and we anticipate the world as it's being developed upon us. And we prepare our little ones, and we can defend our little ones better, and all this other stuff like these other stories are out there to tell us. Jeremy, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Everything that goes on there to keep us on and going, I appreciate all that and all the support that brings to that, that allows this, and Jules at uh, ucy.tv and your simulcasting ongoing with that little station that could. And despite, I hope you're feeling okay and uh, sound minds. I hope you were there this week. And uh, normalization and ignorance, thank you for your postings and all that. Uh, boy, I have one video. I'm glad, uh, maybe I'm really, really glad. Uh, freedom slips. I didn't get uh, get asked to go there or, or were denied there because it sounded no more. It's the last days of Oracle was what I read in that uh, story you posted or heard in that story. But thank you for everybody who passes on the word here. Uh, to everybody else and uh, lets people know we have a chance to do this but we're we can't do it uh, we can't take the word of the authority that has none and that's what we've been doing too much without knowing how to counter it i'll be with you next week tech diffs or nature willing
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.